Hello, I'm Shion Ishikawa from Rakuten Institute of Technology. Today, I'm going to present about dynamic collaborative filtering Thomson sampling for cross-domain advertisement recommendation. Recommender systems based on merge armed bandits have been proposed. Artwork personalization through merge armed bandit in Netflix is a famous case. Recently, we also started to utilize this algorithm for online advertising in e-commerce market. Here we realized traditionally this model have mainly focused on one domain. However, companies often serve multiple services and a set of users are shared among them. So there is a potential benefit to provide cross-domain recommendation. Let me talk about use case first. Let's assume a user was interested in earning reward points and clicks point-related advertisement. Recently, this user came to get an interest in eating delicious food and clicked food-related ads on the e-commerce site, Domain A. Our model will recommend the related restaurant in restaurant land reservation website, Domain B. Also, our model can recommend related hotels in the newly created website for lodging reservation, Domain C, and improve the cold start issue of Domain C. Our model also recommends food-related ads clicked by the user to the similar user in Domain A. This kind of cross-domain and cross-user recommendation will be conducted based on similarity function SAD and SUSER. Let me also describe the related works. First key difference is transferable contextual bandit for cross-domain recommendation. And their model is called TCB and they introduced the translation matrix among domains to utilize similarity of domains. And their model is an expansion of upper confidence bound policy. Next is the transferable contextual bandit with prior observation. The model is called T-linear UCB, and this model is an expansion of linear UCB. This calculates the prior evaluation of arms in the new domain with a contextual feature of arms in different domains. And on the other hand, our approach is uh, expansion of Thomson sampling, and we additionally introduce similarity of user and regaining of the reward. Because user's preference will vary, so it's natural to put a high value on recent historical transactions. I'll talk about the problem setting next. We have n available sources. Each source is corresponded to a widget where ads are displayed. In each source, we have a set of ads. Large A sub S is a set of ads in source. Large X is a matrix of users and user features. Large Y super S is a matrix of ads and ad features. For each time and step and source, we first observe contextual features. Users will see an ad, then we observe whether user clicked the ad or not as implicit feedback. The objective of our model is to pick up ad A in each user source time step to maximize cumulative rewards. This can be represented as minimizing total regret. Bandit algorithm handles cold start case relatively well. But standard bandit algorithm still suffers from it because policy assumes no informative prior. For example, in very nice Thomson sampling, the prior distribution is beta distribution. For most cases, we used a non informative prior. However, for the most practical cases, this hyperparameter can be estimated by utilizing historical data. I will show how we improve hyperparameters of prior distribution. The hyperparameters of prior distribution will be initialized by equation 4. Here we introduced discounting to rewards with hyperparameter gamma. The parameter for each user i and add k is estimated from reward of other add by target user and reward of target add by other user based on the cosine similarity s. In equation 4, alpha and beta are hyperparameters of beta distribution and alpha means the successful count of clicking at, and beta means the no successful count of clicking at. For each parameter, 
first term represent transparent rewards among others by a target users and second term represent transparent rewards among users by a target ad. Here I'll show how we calculate parameters of posterior distribution from the obtained prior distribution. In Thompson sampling, prior distribution was beta distribution and because it's a natural conjunction, posterior distribution is also beta distribution. Therefore, here we are interested in obtaining alpha and beta for posterior distribution. Because we have parameters for each person and at, the naive way is to utilize only personal rewards. However, personal rewards are sparse, so we also used global rewards with hyperparameter g. And here, lambda is a hyperparameter which adjusts the importance of prior knowledge. Here is the algorithm of our proposal model, Dynamic Collaborative Filtering Thomson Sampling. Our model initially requires lambda, g, gamma, similarity function s user and s add, and source observation o. For each time step, we first observe user i, context x, action set large a, and their context large y. Then at line 4 for each arm, we calculate alpha and beta for the prior distribution. This alpha and beta will be calculated from the reward from other ads and other users. At line 5, from the obtained prior knowledge, we calculate posterior distribution. Here we adjust how we prioritize prior knowledge by parameter lambda. Remaining part is similar to Thomson sampling. Just we sample scores from beta distribution and play arm which maximizes score. Finally, we observe tuple of context, play arm and reward, and then add it to the observation of source S. To evaluate our model, we first conducted a simulation with synthetic data. Left figure shows the result of transferring knowledge in two different sources. In this setting, we showed five adds in the first 500 steps and we switched adds to another five adds in the later 500 steps. Here, we, our proposal model, Dynamic Collaborative Filtering Thomson Sampling, transferred first half information to the later half optimization. X-axis means time step and Y-axis means average cumulative reward. The vertical red line shows the time step we switched the pace. The shaded band indicates 95% confidence interval obtained by three trials. Light figure shows the change of user's preference. In this setting, we prepared 50 ads. At time step uh, 300, we switched the user's response function. The vertical red line shows the time step we switched the user's response function. Next, I'll talk about the method we use for offline simulation. First, we prepared several ads which were displayed together in the carousel. Secondly, we regarded this as a standard problem of single slot optimization. Here, when we conduct an offline simulation by using this data, we know which ad was clicked among all ads. Note that we are aware there is a series of research about off-policy variation. As our future work, we are applying doubly robust and inverse probability weighting to our algorithm now. Uh, we compared dynamic collaborative filtering bandit with transferable linear UCB, hybrid linear UCB, Thomson sampling, and random policy. Due to the privacy issues, all reported CTRs were divided by the CTR of random policy. We pre-trained DCTS and T linear UCB by Rakuten Ichiba data first. Left figure shows the relative CTR on Rakuten travel data. We executed experiment three times. Each line indicates the mean of three trials, and the shaded band indicated 95% confidence interval. H linear UCB and T linear UCB are deterministic policy, therefore they don't have a shaded band. As a result, Blue line of DCTS performed better than red line of T linear UCB by 9.7% and better than orange line of linear UCB and green line of Thomson sampling by around 37%. We 
we also conducted an evaluation of parameter. A parameter gamma is a hyperparameter, which means discount of reward, as following. Figure shows the relative CTRs by various parameter gamma, and we normalized values by the value of when gamma equals 0.5. We obtained the best performance when gamma is 0.25 and it suggests this value is the most suitable discount for a reluctant travel dataset. As a conclusion, we propose dynamic collaborative filtering Thomson sampling and improved prior distribution of Thomson sampling by transferring information from other domains. And we also conducted an empirical analysis on a real-world dataset and the result shows that TCTS improved click-through rate by 9.7% than the state-of-the-art models. And finally, we analyzed hyperparameters that adjust temporal, temporal dynamics and show the best parameter which maximizes CTR. As a future work, we will incorporate historical sequence of users' behavior when transferring knowledge and we will conduct an experiment of off-policy evaluation for the case of transferring rewards. That's all. Thank you for listening.